All right, guys, I'm Julianne, more commonly known as Financially Free with Jules here on YouTube and over on Instagram. I'm always posting daily motivational tips, tricks, and other budget information on my Instagram. So today, I'm gonna get started and go right into how to read an LES. I'm very fortunate because I am a O1E, which is a second lieutenant that has prior enlisted experience. If you are in the military and you come in enlisted and you have four years and one day, you get additional pay for having that enlisted experience, which then makes your pay an O1E pay up to O3E pay. And then once you pin on O4, you don't, it basically equals out your pay does. But you get that additional pay. And then my husband is an E5, um, so I also have his paycheck to break down just so that you can see both sides of the spectrum. So let's get started. Every soldier is gonna get a base pay, right? So my base pay as an O1E is $4,011. For an E5 in the Army, it's $3,011.50. The next entitlement that we get is BAS, which is basic allowance for subsidence, basically food costs. Yes, you get money every month to pay for your groceries. For officers, it's $254 a month and enlisted, it's $369. However, a lot of enlisted personnel do not get BAS. It comes in and then comes right back out as a deduction on theirs because they will eat at the cafeterias, the defects, right? Next allotment or next benefit is going to be your BAH or your basic housing allowance or OHA, overseas housing allowance. You get one or the other, but you are not entitled to both. For instance, I'm here in Korea, so I'm entitled to OHA. However, I live on post. Um, it's a requirement here for me to live on post. So my OHA is $13. That's it. However, my husband lived in Hawaii, and of course, you know the cost of live, uh, the cost of living in Hawaii is obviously more expensive. So his housing allowance was two thousand four hundred forty-five dollars, which was definitely enough to cover a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment, and it also covered most of the utilities in that apartment as well. Next up is gonna be hazard duty pay. Not every soldier is entitled to hazard duty pay. It all depends on where you're stationed at. Here in Korea, I'm in area four, which is the farthest area away from North Korea. So I still have to get hazard duty pay, but I get it at a lot lower of a cost than if I was up in area one or two. So my monthly hazard duty pay is $50 a month. My husband does not get any hazard duty pay because he's not stationed in an area where it's considered hazardous. Next up would be COLA. COLA isn't given at every duty station either. COLA is only to offset the additional cost of living where that duty station is. So here in Korea, I get $542 a month for COLA. And in Hawaii, my husband gets $391.29 to offset the cost of what your base pay is. Now, the COLA is only given in certain areas. So if you're stationed at, say, Fort Riley, Fort Hood, some you know place in the continental US, you're not going to most likely get COLA because your base pay is equivalent to what those in the civilian sector are making. FSH is family separation pay. If you are dual military or married and have a dependent and you're separated from that dependent for longer than 30 days, you are entitled family separation pay at $250 a month. The person that the military separated from the other person, for instance, I was put on orders, my husband and I lived in Hawaii together, and then I was put on orders to Korea. So I was separated from him, means that I get the separation pay, not both parties, just the person that was separated. So my husband doesn't get anything. Next up, we're gonna look at our deductions that are gonna show up on your paycheck. We'll start with federal taxes. For me, of course, the more you make, the more you're gonna pay in taxes. So I have $478 that come out of my pay paycheck every month for taxes, and my husband has $253. 
Social Security. Um, if you're working, you're paying Social Security. So I pay $248 a month and my husband pays $186 a month. SGLI, which is Service Members Service Members Group Life Insurance, um, you, can be anywhere from $5 a month up to $25 a month, depending on your coverage. We both had $400,000 coverage, which is $25 a month, but you could have none. Like if you are a single soldier and have, you know, no one to take care of, then you might not need it. But when you are married and have children, you're probably going to want some more coverage. But even at $5 a month, you can have $50,000 worth of coverage. I highly suggest to pay paying into it, I think it's very beneficial. So both of ours are the same, that doesn't change by rank. Seat taxes, mine's $135 a month because my home of record on my taxes is Ohio. However, my husband's record is Texas and in Texas, active duty military do not pay income tax, which is really nice, so he doesn't have any that comes out. Next up is gonna be Roth TSP. I have $401 coming out. That's 10% of my income, comes out every month and goes into my Roth TSP. And my husband has $180, which is, I think 7%, 7% of his income is coming out into the Roth TSP. So here's the thing about TSPs. TSPs in the Army are part of your retirement system. So the Army will match 5% of whatever you Put in so or five percent is the match that the army will do so there's no point in only putting three percent into your tsp because then the army's only going to match three percent but if you put five percent of your income in every month the army's going to match five percent that's basically free money that they're giving you for saving for your future so i highly suggest that if you don't have money going aside that you go in to your my pay portal and on the left hand side you'll see a place where you can change your tsp contributions go in there and put at least five percent of your income in to your tsp account last but not least is going to be medicare um, i pay 58 dollars a month for medicare and my husband pays 43 dollars a month what does that mean for our total take home pay well there's one other thing that we both um, take out of our paychecks monthly. We, there are allotments. Any soldier can do an allotment. Common, the, the common misconception about allotments is that, that it's a negative thing, right? That if you're taking an allotment, it's probably because it's for child support, maybe back pay for something, maybe a credit card debt. But all allotments are not bad. I highly, highly suggest that if you have not set up an allotment for savings, go in and do it today. So I have $700 a month that comes out of my paycheck. I don't see it. It doesn't go into my normal bank account and goes into a separate savings account that I just don't touch. So every month I have $700 that goes into a savings account. And then my husband has an allotment set up for rent. So the, our rent is not, you know, $2,400. Our rent is $1,900 a month. So he has that set up an allotment so that it automatically pays for our rent on the first of every month. It's a great concept and a great setup. So what does that mean? What do we bring home? Um, Cause that's what everyone wants to know, right? How much do you make, right? So bi-monthly, I get paid on the first and the 15th. Actually all military get paid on the first and 15th. I'm no one special, right? I take home about $1,300 a month and my husband takes home about $1,500 a month. You'll notice that I'm a higher rank than my husband, but he brings home more. Part of that's because of the state taxes, also because he makes less, he pays less in social security and some other um, deductions as well. So in general, oh, and I don't get my housing because I have, I'm living on post on the army's dime, so I don't see my housing, but that's a decent income. Now, most people be like, well, I can make more in the civilian sector. You could, but remember that $60,000 a year job that you might be able to get in the civilian sector, you still have to pay health insurance out of it, your housing out of it, your food out of it, your retirement out of it. So really $60,000 seems like a lot right now when you're wearing the uniform, but it's really not that much guys. You'll also notice that 
The BAH, so the basic allowance for subsistence or the food stipend, is less for officers than it is for enlisted. I couldn't find any research um, in any of the regulations to explain this difference to me. I have no idea, do officers just eat less than enlisted? I don't know, or is it just because officers make more in their base pay so it offsets it? Some other things to consider is every year soldiers get a allotment for uniform replacements and it varies but it's a, like about $350 every year on your army anniversary. So my army anniversary is the 27th of January. I'll hit six years time in service. And I would typically, if I was enlisted, get a $350 extra into my check to pay for new boots, new uniforms, ribbons for my dress uniforms, etc. But officers, er, we don't get a clothing allowance. Only the enlisted get that. So officers, we pay for all of our upgrades on our uniform out of pocket. Some other army benefits that you should consider that you'll see on your pay stubs or your LES, leaves and earnings statement is what we call it, is potentially per diem cost. So if you're moving to a new duty station, you might get 10 days of permissive TDY for house hunting. That's typically only if you have a dependent or you're a high enough rank. And the other thing that you might see is DLA, which is a partial reimbursement that you'll get for expenses incurred during a relocation. And that's all based on rank and dependent number. You know, typically DLA is not authorized when PCS is from your home or place where you entered active duty. And additionally, if you go to a school, you might get put on TDY orders and collect, you know, TDY money as well, such as per diem, travel costs, um, etc. So I think this kind of breaks down the LES and the pay structure. Additionally, on your LES, you're going to see, you know, your leave days, your current balance, what your ETS balance would be, which ETS is just the date that you're going to be getting out of the military. You might have You'll have the number of dependents for tax purposes, and you'll also have, like it will show you, you break down how much you've put into your TSP for the year to, like year to date, same with taxes for state and federal year to date taxes. And it will show you what state you pay taxes in. There's a whole bunch of useful information um, on your LES, and I highly suggest if you don't know what's going on with your LES, that you get with your S1 or the ACS center to provide farther guidance. But if you have any questions in regards to LES and LES breakdowns, feel free to drop them below. I'll make sure that I answer them. Thanks for watching, guys.